If it's a day of the week ending in the letter Y, that means we must be faced with the dire news about another recession. Only this time we are faced with the possibility that the very agency charged with ensuring it doesn't happen is the one that could cause it. Toss that into a bucket with an interesting idea on how to hopefully avoid the mortgage traps of recent years and a dance with the Wall Street devil over which candidate to back and we have the opening bell. Welcome back to syndicated columnist read on Newsmax.com and University of Maryland professor of business Peter Morisi. Joined by the Wall Street veteran economist and author of The American Dream Under Fire, Steve Beeman. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Peter, I start with you. Your recent column, the Fed could push the economy into another recession. Well, wait a minute, Peter. Isn't that exactly what they're supposed to make sure it doesn't happen? <laughs> well, yes, but all of Janet Yellen's vacillating about what she's going to do uh, is uh, making very, people very nervous and causing investors to be uh, very skittish about the market. Uh, companies not to invest and so forth. There's lots wrong with this economy and Greenspan wouldn't have been afraid to say it and to challenge Congress and the president to shape up. Yellen's too good a liberal to do that and she really just won't admit that things are a terrible mess. So is Janet Yellen then in many instances, we continue to talk about this, just the wrong person for this job at this time and she absolutely is going to drive this country down the tube? She is the wrong person at this time. She's just not decisive enough. It's what happens when the women decide to get a woman in there and somebody percolates up through seniority as opposed to having to really win the job. I mean, they basically torpedoed Summers so they could get Yellen in. They never really thought about whether Yellen was the right person. It's not that there aren't qualified women, but Janet Yellen sort of got there by just being there. You know, Woody Allen said, you get a lot of credit for just showing up. <laughs> hey, Steve, a while back, Janet Yellen said she believed it was a myth that expansions die of old age. But there are others saying, well, wait a minute, there might not be a magic threshold of five or six years here, but they do die of old age. And she's the one that's got to be able to stop it before it basically creaks its way towards hurting everybody else in America. Well, there's certainly some cyclicality to the world, but I'll tell you, I'm a little scared to be on with Peter right now with all the hate mail he's going to get from that comment. <laughs> but I think to his Go honor, for it, the, Steve. The, Don't worry about the, it. That's what we do on this show. Damn the torpedoes. Full steam ahead, steam ahead man. What? <laughs> well, here's the reality. The markets do hate uncertainty, and Janet right now is doing everything she seems to want to do to put uncertainty into the markets. You know, we had 151,000 jobs last month as opposed to the estimate of 190. That's not good news. But instead of coming out saying, okay, that's it, we're not going to do a rate increase and just being decisive about it, they're hedging. And so the markets are saying, well, we're going to trade around this information, but we're not going to make long-term commitments. Peter, just real quickly here, how concerned are you, though, about hate mail regarding Janet Yellen and your statements? <laughs> I'm not particularly concerned at all. People are used to me. I did not think so at all. All right, let's get to this now. Marco Rubio apparently is winning the Wall Street fundraising race. Apparently, he's got more than $4 million from the employees of banks and investment firms. And now that Jeb Bush is out, a lot of those same companies told Reuters they're going to throw their money behind Rubio. Steve, to you first, this money going to Marco Rubio. Wait a minute, aren't we in an era where we hear that people don't like the establishment candidates, yet this is establishment money? Do you think it will help or hurt him? I think it's going to hurt him. He needs the money. And the fact of the matter is with Bush out of the race now, Marco is the favorite insider. So he's going to get that big bank money, that big institutional money that wants another friend of themselves in the in the position. It's not going to hurt Trump, I don't think, too much. It'll play against Rubio, frankly, with a lot of the really grassroots people, the Tea Party types who hate the institutions. So we'll have to see in Nevada how it plays out. But it certainly puts him ahead of Cruz for that running. Peter, is there any way that if you are a candidate, you can accept this kind of money and separate yourself from it to where, as Steve alluded to, the voters won't hold you responsible for it and won't hold you uh, to a negative vote in the end? I don't think he needs to worry about a negative vote if he manages to get nominated because Hillary Clinton, I mean, has really got Wall Street money. I mean, they live up there in New York and they are the Wall she is the Wall Street candidate. Uh, but I think his more basic problem is that Cruz is around. If he had a head-on-head -head race with a uh, one-on-one -on -one race with Trump, I think he could beat him. But he doesn't have that, and those two guys are splitting the vote, uh, the, 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 and, and that's the basic problem. I got 30 seconds here. Real quick, just 15 seconds from both of you, and I got one more thing to talk about here. Peter, to you, is it time for John Kasich and Ben Carson to get out? Carson, yes. Kasich, no. Kasich, I think, is running for vice president. He's taking so few votes away from the others that I don't think he makes a difference. The real problem is Cruz. I don't think that Cruz can win this thing, but he's in till the end, which means that Trump probably will win, 
and then lose to Clinton. 15 seconds, same thing to you there, Steve. Uh, I think Kasich, to, to Peter's point, is running for vice president. And I think a game changer here would be if Trump came out and put Kasich on as vice president. I think that would be something people aren't expecting and could put him above Hillary in the long run. All right, last 60 seconds overall, 30 to each of you. Bank of America's newest mortgage, low down payment, as little as 3% and no FHA. What do you think, Steve? Uh, I, my first glance is I like it because it's getting away from government stuff. But the reality is 3% down scares me because you've got a market that can fluctuate in price and you could have people getting into more of these mortgages they can't afford. I credit Bank America with trying to be somewhat creative here at the bottom line and get some money out there to the mortgage of the less than optimal players. Yeah, that fear of mortgages that you can't afford. What do you think, Peter? Well, FHA has imposed such onerous regulatory requirements on the banks for, you know, hangnail mistakes in mortgage applications. They can be terribly fine that they're simply going around them. Now, be be known that FHA makes three and a half percent down mortgages. So this isn't a big difference. And the investors that buy the bonds will take the risks as long as they're aware of the risks. It's on them. And Bank of America makes sure that the paperwork is generally good, not perfect, but generally good, and that the incomes are verified and so forth. The folks that buy the bonds take the risks, and that's capitalism. I see 3%, and I start to shake just a little bit all over again. <laughs> Here we go. We've seen this all before. Uh, Peter that's Marisi, Steve Beeman. cycles, friend. <laughs> there it is. Welcome, welcome to American politics and, econ and, and economics as well. Peter Marisi, Steve Beeman, thanks for joining us, guys. All right, what actually happened in South Carolina to bounce another candidate, and why one group of voters seem to be tracking against type. It's something that gave Donald Trump the victory. Coming up next, right here on The Hardline.